Good evening, everybody. Uh, May the 16th, 2023, regular meeting of council will be called to order. Result of the agenda for the May 16th, 2023, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. I believe that Deputy Mayor Morio is going to be attending by Zoom here shortly. Result of the minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 regular meeting, council meeting, be approved. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Resolved that the letter from the Manitoba Municipal Relations dated May the 5th, 2023, regarding filing the annual financial plans be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. This is just on, obviously, the uh, letter that uh, we need to get our financial plan to the minister, and which we've done. Go ahead. That answers my first part of the question. If we met the first one of May 15th, and are we on track to meet the second one for June 30th? Yeah. Wonderful. Councilor White. Yeah, I just, I just I jump up what I see. I think it's a grammatical error in the first sentence. Medical municipalities file their annual financial plans with the Minister of Municipal, Minister of Municipal Affairs. Is, is there a, a Minister of Municipal? Is there such an entity? Uh, uh, a so minister for Manitoba Municipal Relations? Yeah, there is that, but the, the state he's the letter says specifically at the letter. There's a they missed a word. Yeah. I'm just wondering out loud. Mm -hmm. I think I know there isn't, but I'd like to ask and I don't know. Just, Mr. Gray wrote the letter, he says that we have whatever the very first sentence of the minute with the Minister of Municipal. I'm assuming affairs should be there. Probably. Probably. The next time we see Mr. Gray, uh, which will be at the uh, June 22nd uh, district meeting, uh, maybe we can... Uh, tell him we're not right. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Result of the building permits 923 through 1323 with a total estimated value of $65,000 be received. Moved by... Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Just one question, just to confirm and or clarify. When we're seeing these, we're just, it's just a heads up to us, and That's all correct. requirements needed have been met before they're approved? Yes. Yeah, okay. we're not allowed to approve them unless the requirements are met. <clears throat> Okay, I, that's what I thought, but I thought I'm going to double check just to make sure. Thank you. I'll have to go only, through. Council, sorry, council only sees the ones that are approved. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank yeah, you. I have to go through like the planning district and then also the other uh, items that need to be uh, covered in order to uh, have the uh, permit approved. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion. Councillor Medwood. I do have a couple of questions. I don't know if they can be answered or not. Um, he's reported with a bit of an update on the lagoon. The machine is into cell two. Um, just out of curiosity. I know with hearing, there is a test for levels to make sure when sound is being above a certain decibel that safety gear. Is there any such similar test for odor? Mr. Harvey? Oh, he's online today. Mr. Yeah. Harvey? Uh, yeah, the lagoon is kind of a combination of gases. So what, it would be hard to have one to detect kind of everything, because like detectors are set up to detect one type of gas, but there's quite a few different gases out there. Um, so it's not like you could have a detector that would cover them all kind of thing. Okay, because I've had a couple people 
asking me with regards to that and whether or not we might be in, in vi um, violating any environmental, uh, I guess, criteria with regards to odor, in, especially in the springtime. Is there any particular test we can do on odor with regards to that? Uh, I'd have to talk to our environmental officer regarding that. As far okay. as we know, the province or the feds don't have any regulation regarding odor. Odor for our lagoon, we meet chemical requirements for effluent, but there's no odor requirement. <clears throat> okay, that's what I wanted to kind of find out. And if <clears throat> go ahead. Okay. Um, the foreman's report with the uh, RRC certification, that training, is that something that is done, I guess how do we handle training for our staff, is that something that's kind of done on their own time and then the town reimburses for costs or is that something that's done during work hours? Uh, the town, or they do it during work hours and the town covers the cost of the course. Thank you. Council White. I'm going to guess that one of the main sources that bouquet is hydrogen sulfide, and I'm, I'm not aware if there's a test for hydrogen sulfide, but I think they're related. There is uh, detectors for hydrogen sulfide, uh, probably methane is a big one there. Um, but yeah, there's a few different gases, so I mean, you could pick a gas and see what the detection level is for that, but as far as like an overall one, it's kind of a combination of a bunch of different gases. Second question would be uh, that uh, graveside that had a little bit of uh, disrepair and we were looking at planting trees and fixing the headstone, has that been looked after? The, one uh, the topsoil has been replaced and uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from the um, greenhouse as to when the violet bushes are in. Okay, have you contacted the uh, constituent? Yeah, I talked to her a couple times. Perfect, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Okay, uh, Councillor Boychuk and then Deputy Mayor Memorial. Uh, I just wanted to kind of reiterate on the lagoon thing for the public if they're watching that there is that EMF 1000 in there and hopefully in the next few years we'll see an improvement with that odor. So there's stuff that the town is doing. Right. Yeah, and it is less than it has been in the past. Like, mm -hmm. I, I know spring time is always the worst. And uh, Much when you, like I was out there on Monday uh, on the boat, and Ooh, like it smelled like it does in at the end of August, maybe a little bit worse. But normally in the springtime, it's quite bad when you're actually out there, and it doesn't seem to be that bad this year. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Harvey, what's, what's the status with street sweeping? Um, is the sweeper broken again or is, what's the story uh, there? We've had a few uh, electrical issues with it and uh, our mechanics been repairing it. It was down this morning, but I believe they got it up and running again. Um, it was on the docket for uh, replacement next year, but I had a meeting with the transportation committee to uh, switch it out for the tractor, so replacing it instead of the tractor this year. But, uh, you just read my mind. <laughs> yeah, by the time we get it though, uh, the season will be done, so we're hoping to get through this season, look through the season and get uh, it ready so that next spring we're good to go with a new one or while well, I slightly used one, I should say. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2, result that the April 2023 Protective Services Report be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by <laughs> Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? A couple questions, I think three. Um, it, the fire report has Swamp Valley West uh, Vehicle Fire Highway 83. We invoiced some money. 
Is that get invoice to Swan Valley West or MPI being it was a vehicle? Uh, probably MPI, but I'll let uh, Fire Chief answer that. Yeah, that will be an invoice to MPI for our response. Okay, thank you. I was just, yeah. Uh, the next one was uh, 124 Fifth Avenue South. What is our date for them to do the demolition themselves or the town steps in? Do we? I believe it's June 30th. Okay, thank you. And what is, oh, the QSR, the wildland truck, it says on here that it would be operational at the fire hall for May 3rd. Is that complete? We're good to go with it? Yeah, we had our uh, first call with it, I believe it was two or three days ago, on the 14th. Wonderful. That's good right. to hear. Okay, good. Uh, for the discussion? All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> 7.3. Resolved that April 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Reports. Start with Councillor Medwood. <clears throat> Awesome. I am going to start with an apology. At the uh, library board meeting, I got a little over-passionate about the library, and when our mayor and chair was trying to wrap the meeting up, I wasn't able to put the brakes on. It was not intentional, but disrespectful all the same. So I do apologize for that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, it was not an overwhelming two weeks, so... Uh, I did attend the Red Dress Day at the Friendship Center and followed up at the Legion Park. It was a very nice uh, organized event. Uh, attended the Swan Valley Sport Fish Dinner, first time for that. It was uh, entertaining and fun as well. Attended the Committee of the Whole for the strategic plan, uh, continuing with our strategic plan on the 9th. Uh, May 10th, I had someone contact me regarding animal control, so I worked with CAO Pool, and we, I kind of helped to come up with a nice solution for that one, and it got taken care of. A uh, transportation meeting that morning, which uh, Director Harvey's already uh, mentioned, we spoke about the swapping out of replacement of the sweeper versus the tractor. And uh, communities that care was uh, that meeting and we were discussing how to contribute to Canada Day. Uh, we are currently discussing the purchase of some large um, people sized games, so Jenga, Connect Four kind of thing, that would be available for, well, they would be in communities that care um, and then available for use. So we just don't have the board or the volunteers, so it's probably going to be coming down the pipe to you soon that that's about what we can, can contribute. Uh, May 11th was a chamber meeting which got cancelled because we did not have a quorum for the board. Attended the library meeting uh, that night. I'll try to keep my passion in check in the future. Um, Services for seniors. We had our meeting this afternoon. Our AGM will be June 20th. We're <coughs> going to be looking to see if we can get the Harley House for that. So for anybody who would like to attend um, 1 o'clock, June 20th, location to be confirmed. Um, but that's the date and time for sure. Uh, COPP April stats were 13 patrols for 37 hours. I have three, possibly five new members to train on the 24th. Our regular monthly meeting is coming up this Thursday. And uh, Communities of Bloom will be meeting tomorrow, but they're meeting during the daytime and I will be working, so I won't be able to attend. I think that's everything for me. Okay, thank you. Councilor White. <clears throat> uh, May 5, I went to the Hero Club uh, barbecue with a, one of a group of men and women helping young people, old people, people in need, and uh, thank you to the Hero Club executive. Uh, the fish dinner at the moment, it appears we had over $45,000 profit. 
I suspect it might be more, and, and it wouldn't happen without the corporate community and the volunteers, and I, and I want to thank them. On May the 8th, I went to the Immigrant Services meeting, and it looks like we have uh, over 60 Ukrainian people here. I'm not sure if that's families, I suspect it's total. And uh, they are now a registered charity, which helps which, if you can want to donate. Over 30 different countries represented by Immigrant Services, and uh, they, they didn't shut down during COVID, which was a compliment to all of them. And I suspect uh, all, the, all the immigrant people are a huge economic uh, driver for our community and a, a spiritual, moral, cultural, that's the word I was looking for, what a way to learn about another culture than having people here. On the 9th, we had our COW meeting, which Council already alluded to. On the 10th, I talked to Nicole Kotick at length about uh, doctor recruiting, retaining, and that's an ongoing thing. On the airport commission meeting on May the 10th, uh, I think the good news is uh, it appears the other councils are going to support status quo. That's what we've been pushing all along. And uh, I'm not sure how that took two years to everybody go back to where we started. But a compliment to, to all of us for discussing that uh, volatile issue fairly amicably. At uh, the UCN meeting on May the uh, 11th, uh, there I, I sit on the volunteer board and uh, bridging is still an issue for me personally and for our community. It's uh, getting a lot of pushback, but uh, that's reality. I can live with that. But I, uh, the library board uh, meeting with the town and uh, in uh, Swan Valley West, I was pleased with everybody who was open and frank. And uh, obviously, it's, it'll take some time to solve, but everybody's trying to do better, and I compliment all the players. Uh, May 15th, we went to the LP SAC meeting. Uh, uh, Councillor Bobak was there in a, wearing a different hat, but uh, one nevertheless said, uh, uh, I, I appreciate that, that they share with the public all, all their plans and the things they do collaboratively. One of the neat things that Councillor Bobak asked about, roads have been an issue since day one. When you make a road, you have access to a wilderness spot. That road creates problems for everybody who wants to drive down there, and the animals are attracted to those clear cuts. End of discussion. So they take the roads down. So there's a lot of roads out there, but decommissioned. Uh, Councillor Bobak asked a question, what are you doing about that? As it turns out, they're doing something very significant. They're using helicopters. So they fly the seedlings in, and they fly the workers in, and fly the workers out, and less in impact from a road perspective. If we're putting out fires, we have to have clear cuts. If we don't put out fires, that, that mountain turns old, and it burns down altogether. So that, that's an important concept. Uh, tomorrow, I would like to uh, invite our listening public to uh, the uh, PMH Expo, for last, lack of a better term, uh, from uh, 12 till 7 at the regional school. Uh, Reeve uh, Gade, Reeve uh, Beerman, and myself will be there, and Councilor Morio will be there because he's supplying all the paper stuff that we're handing out. Thank you for that, uh, David. It's appreciated. And we'll talk about what Swan Valley has to offer relative to doctors, nurses, etc. So thank you, David, for, for providing that information. That's it, sir. Okay, thank you. Council Paul. Okay, um, so May 11th, we met in the town in Swan River and the RM board regarding the library. Um, the 14th, I discussed the library with the board. May the 16th, I met with the <coughs> library staff. Um, we also, uh, at I also attended the Red Breast Day, Missing Murder Indigenous Women Day, which we held with a pancake breakfast, which turned out, the turnout was great. Um, we also, uh, I also met with the Swan Valley Community Foundations, which was a, which was a great, um, lots of um, lots of interesting things with them, and, and had lots of uh, presentations from from community foundations itself. Um, through the Albert Charter and Friendship Center, we have also did Meals on Wheels, which is um, absolutely, if you've never done it, it's absolutely the most amazing little thing to do. And this for the next couple couple weeks, we're doing it, but it was a really uh, a great thing to meet some of the people that um, you know you deliver to. It's some of our seniors that are really, really just very great to to actually um, meet and, and greet with and, and chat with. So yeah, that was that was it. That's my... Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Councillors, watch up. Um. Well, on uh, what was it? May 4th was the red dress day, 6th. 
We uh, volunteered at uh, McDonald's, on t or I did on two yeah. separate occasions. Tanya uh, came with, uh, Councillor Powell came with me on the Red Dress Day as well, as uh, we also had a school volunteer, Peyton uh, Thompson, came out. And uh, I have to say I had such a fun time both days that I was there volunteering. Great staff, great people to be around. It was, it was, it was a great experience. We're still waiting on the final amount, but um, I think it was quite successful. And what a great thing for the community going forward. I uh, attended the Cal meeting with uh, all of you here. Um, unfortunately, due to travel, was not able to make the library meeting. Uh, we had the Chamber of Commerce meeting had to be rescheduled for quorum issues, so that'll be upcoming. And then myself and Deputy Mayor Morio have a Swan Valley Planning District meeting coming up on May 29th. And, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio had uh, shared the news that the BSE grant was successful for the uh, program there. Um, and then also uh, missing a grant committee meeting tomorrow, but uh, hopefully we'll have an update with that. I did speak with uh, Lana regarding uh, putting uh, a request into LP for one of their fundraisers for the luncheon that they do. I don't know if you've seen that last summer they kind of started it. Near Wednesdays? Yeah, yeah. So they, I think they donated over $10,000 last summer doing it. So um, I uh, made a call out and spoke with uh, Cassidy there and uh, just getting her some correspondence to put it formally and hopefully we can get a lunch date and that proceeds can go towards our Canada Day celebration. Um, the other thing I was thinking about doing, and I don't know if I need to do this to council or not, but I'll put it out there and then you can give me feedback, but uh, was also to register us with the LP Overweights program. Just put it on there and if people want to donate something, they can <coughs> and if we can't, but at least it's there and if we do get some of that, then it can help to uh, offset the costs as everything seems to be rising and nothing ever goes down. So that was another thing I was going to do. And that's everything for me. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bobbick. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to speak a little bit about the sweeper at the transportation meeting. So in the discussion of the, of the sweeper and uh, bi-directional, bi-directional has approximately 4,500 hours on it. The thing is 10 years old. It was up on the slate to be replaced this year as a 10-year-old thing. So with that, the calculation works out to 450 hours a year, which I'm more than confident that that thing will last another year. Uh, with that, that machine will have to have a long, hard look at because we cannot replace it and we are no longer make them. So in order to replace that, we're going to be looking at a totally different machine. So with that, in the conversation, it came up that our street sweeper is not in dire straits, but there is a few issues on it. So whereas the bi-directional is working fine, as far as I know right now, so cross your fingers, I didn't put a hex on it here. But so the decision I made to bring it forward that we look at getting a new sweeper or one that comes off lease. So Director Harvey will be bringing that forward. I uh, attended a cow meeting. Um, I also the stakeholders meeting at LP. Lots of information from LP. I think LP has some questions from concerned citizens or ratepayers and stuff what's going on but they have all the answers they have very good answers they were very well put well documented and their practices are very well done so kudos to them for the information that was provided there last night and uh, how they're carrying on with first nations people with first with all stakeholders in the whole valley so kudos to them uh, attended the library board meeting. I don't know if it was a board meeting, but a meeting with the board. Um, we'll be having a watershed meeting Thursday night. You have probably got a letter from the watershed <coughs> on your on your commitment for the watershed, uh, as I would think you was sent out. Yeah. Okay. Just to speak a little bit on that, uh, Don Swan River yes. has. <coughs> committed to the watershed over the years, and I strongly recommend that, that we don't benefit as much in the labor part of it, although I do think you're still ahead. We did an $80,000 project and another, my right, $90,000 project on the other time. But it is 
and I do believe I always make the speech that Thomas Warner realizes that by the watershed, what they do in the whole valley is protecting our watershed. So I've always used Brandon as a as an example. Brandon gives uh, sixty thousand dollars to two watersheds outside them. They're not a member of the watershed, but they put to the watershed so that they know their water is protected. So I'm using us as the same. So kudos to the Fawn River. Uh, just had a conversation today with Director Harvey a little bit. Uh, I'm lost for the name of the company with the chemical jugs. If you could bring me up to speed. Uh, so Clean Farms is the one that handles the uh, used chemical jugs. And uh, so last fall they switched from uh, municipal uh, returns to returns at the vendors. And uh, so they did have, uh, they provide us some advertising that we put out there and we were contact, uh, or they were contacting vendors to let them know. And uh, so farmers are now to return their jugs to uh, where they purchased them instead of bringing them to the landfill. And our landfill attendants, like we had the advertising at landfill and our landfill attendants were letting all the farmers know last year that uh, next year they'll have to take them back to the vendors. But at that, in the conversation today, that I, the vendors are not taking them back. They have no way of storing them. Uh, <coughs> clean farms will come and pick up at the farmyards, pick up at the vendors all over the valley. To me, it doesn't make sense when you have a facility here in the town of Fawn River that's been collecting them for years in that one spot to pick up. Now we're going to burn a whole bunch of diesel fuel and drive all over the place picking up these things. I think that's something that should be brought forward to the AMM. Uh, really, there's no charge at the landfill for it. Right now, uh, knowing the contractor that sp spoke with Clean Farms, they were under the impression that we should take them until they pick them up this year. Right now, they're coming here anyway to the landfill to pick up what's there, so why would you not keep taking them until they come? So I don't know what directly would you go on that or not. That was a but it, Yeah, it's Clean <coughs> Farms that picks them up and they told us that our last pickup was last fall. But, well, what are we going to do with the ones that are sitting here now? Uh, well, those ones, yeah, they'll have to come do a final cleanup, but they don't want us accepting anymore, I guess is what I meant to say. Okay, that's not the conversation. That's, that's from the company that, or the agency that does the cleanup, like that pays for it. Okay, but that's not the conversation that was carried on today. But anyway, um, I just don't, I, I can't see how this works good for the value. There's going to be jugs all over the place. People are not going to do that. They don't have the time. But it's convenient to drop it at one uniform spot. I, I'm totally against this whole idea. So I don't know where we go. <clears throat> I, don't know, I know that you brought up the, uh, the uh, comment about the AMM. I think that would be probably something more with uh, um, environment. Okay. Maybe that would be a, an avenue there, maybe. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the first thought that comes to my mind anyway. Okay. Maybe we can collect yeah, other municipalities. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Also, I just would, I don't know, I haven't talked to any of landfill attendants or I don't know if Director Harvey has, but I think there should be something put out again that this is what's happening. So right now, spring started, so there's going to be lots coming here right away. And if they all show up at the landfill, they're going to have to refuse them all the time, so they yeah. should be notified. Good again, point. I guess. Mr. Harvey? Mm -mm. Yeah, we can reissue an uh, advertisement. Okay. Okay, um, you have questions in regards to this? Um, yes. Okay. And more just a comment. Um, when we get it finalized, what direction this is going, whether it's staying status quo, whether it's changing, maybe a post on Facebook as well and utilize social media to try and help get the word out to the public so we know. Everybody knows what's happening. There must be some communication with the retailers too, though, isn't it? Yeah, they knew. They they contacted us last year about it. Okay. Uh, Council White. Uh, two things. Uh, 
you alluded to the LP's data that they were sharing with some of first ever I've heard of it from a science perspective. I get all that information, and you might be getting it now too, Don, I'm not sure. If you have questions about the cut blocks, how they do in the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, certainly when I get it updated, when I'll forward it to all the council, you can have a look at it. And, and a compliment to your team over there, uh, Councilor Bob, would it be appropriate to ask uh, your right-hand man there, Eddie Shaw, to come and do a five-minute dissertation about what the, the Conservation District does? I would strongly recommend that, yes. Yes, I would I'd like to see that happen. Because so it does that, a good job. As you yeah, yeah, exactly. So, no, I think actually uh, we've talked about that at the watershed about doing a dog and pony show to all the municipalities. There yeah. are our partners, so we should. We used to do that. Uh, busy times there right now, so we, we do have picked up a tech here, just started Monday, so that kind of yeah. helps out a bit. So, yeah, well, uh, we have a meeting Thursday. I'll, more well, I'm not sure. I'll more than bring it up. Yeah. Council will agree with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah. It was done before. So. Yeah. Yep, yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, just to go on a little bit here, uh, I'm just wondering if we couldn't get a hold of highways and maybe push a button to see about getting our lines painted a little quicker in Main Street mm -hmm. here. It's it's like that. I don't know if highways. squeaky wheel gets a paint or not, so I mean, not worth it. We can do that. We do it every year. Okay. Well, I'll just have a button we push it to the message, I guess. So. They, they must have a better supplier of the paint now, oh, okay. I have to assume, because it used to come from Texas all the time. So. Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, just a little bit of a safety concern. Who makes a decision on the width of the driveways in and out of businesses on Main Street? I'm trying to think of the last one we put in on Main Street. Existing. Yeah, so there has been a concern about widening one driveway. I happen to drive in you know, there quite frequently. Uh, not the one I'm going to speak on, but that McDonald's intersection there in Cook I don't know what the measurements are from a curb coming in there, but uh, it's almost be better to have that straight through and out onto the street than it is now instead of people zigzagging out of there. So I don't know where we go with that. I would think that the business probably should make some recommendation or maybe come to us. And we could approach MTI together. It would, yeah. There's, a, there's an on ramp there on that curve that's going to. Yeah. Right. They're going to want to look at that. Yeah. So we can always approach them though and find a solution. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Deputy Mayor, you have something to write? I just want to let everybody get a chance to speak, so. Just to piggyback on that, the thing is, is if we have a roundabout still on the table, that might factor into driveway and approaches as well. Because it would certainly be eliminating yeah, we're the definitely still waiting from that, right? so. Yeah, good point. <clears throat> Tipper Mayor Morio. Uh, yeah, not to go over uh, what was talked already, but was at the cow last week and the library board on the 11th. And just uh, an update on the CT scanner that uh, received uh, yesterday. Um, the province has selected a vendor uh, and a make and model for a CT scanner for the Swan River Valley at the hospital. Um, a site has been selected in the hospital for it, and they are going through um, right now, figuring out what they need to do for renovations. And once that's done, or they're in the process of selecting uh, a vendor, pardon me, a vendor, um, an organization to install the, um, the CT scanner and make the renovations because it's specialized work. Um, so once that is done, they will have uh, a more formal timeline of exactly uh, when the scanner will be arriving and operational. So um, there's been some movement on that. And I believe um, we have only one outstanding municipality left for signing the contribution agreement memorandum uh, more or less guaranteeing our contribution funds. Um, so the sooner the uh, province and the Prairie Mountain Health can get that, uh, we don't want that to be uh, a hold up out there. So uh, I think everybody knows 
who the outstanding RM is yet. So if Mr. Poole can follow up tomorrow and we'll put pressure on that and find out when they can get that signed so that uh, we don't want to be the cause of any future holdups. I think they're meeting tonight. They are meeting tonight. Okay, perfect. So um, I was poked, I was poked today to know when that was coming. So um, I can let them know that tomorrow. That hopefully we have some signed documents in the next couple of days. So and that's all I got. I missed that last part. That was that's all. That's all I got. Okay, that's what you said. I was interrupted down here. So, Councillor White, I appreciate your meeting today. I sure hope it's on the agenda. <clears throat> Which? When I get my first chance, I will text the Reeve. Okay, thank you. Oh, yes, it is, yeah. We've been on them every day. Good. So we were, I was on the phone when she put it on her agenda. Perfect, thank you. All right, for myself, uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, we had our uh, monthly or, I guess, quarterly meeting here uh, uh, last week. Um, we're buying or we're looking at purchasing some new equipment for in the hospital, which is good. Uh, some for rehab, and they had this device, I can't remember the name of it, but it was actually a device that they used for training people to uh, for rehabilitation to walk and so forth and, and assist them. And they were sharing this piece of a device from Dauphin, and it would move back and forth and often not be here. So another great piece of equipment that uh, the foundation is looking at purchasing for our hospital. Um, library joint meeting that we had last week, uh, I know that was mentioned already. Uh, again, some, we, we did have a, a silent protest that was out here, and great to see them out here. And uh, I, made, I went out and I talked to them, and I made it very clear to them that this council is not against libraries, and, and the discussion wasn't any of that at all. And uh, quite to the opposite, that we do support libraries and will continue to support libraries. So, and then I, uh, oh, they were also telling me that um, they are forming a new committee called Friends of the Library, in which they want to do uh, fundraising for the library and help the library in many different ways. So we'll see how that goes, but it was definitely uh, good to see them out there as well. And I thought we had a fairly uh, somewhat of a productive meeting as well. That board, we finally met. It was almost a year since we met. We finally got uh, our meeting, uh, inaugural meeting, I guess, uh, on its way. And, Yours truly is the new chair of the vet board, uh, so uh, here we go, you know, down that road, and so looking forward to that. But now we have a good uh, group there, and uh, we we don't really do a lot, really, but uh, we we did meet and, and we have uh, uh, approved the uh, municipal levies, which you'll see in a, in a resolution coming up here shortly. Today, uh, I don't know if you've ever had a chance to see that. Uh, the federal government introduced uh, Bill C-48, and that was uh, an act to amend the criminal code or the, the bail the bail reform. We've all seen that. I sent you guys uh, an all email uh, from the, I guess they say, West and North Regional Advisor to the Office of the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Canada. So uh, we'll have to have a check, you know, look, look that over and see what we think and have some opinions about that. I know there's some legalities and there's still a long ways to go, but I think that, you know, some of the work that we've done as a community, uh, lobbying for the federal government uh, with the help of the provincial government to change some of this legislation. So we're going down the right road and, and uh, I don't think we're done yet, but uh, this is a step in the right direction and uh, we'll see where it goes. And, and talk about, some of you talked about some fun that you had uh, here last week. I had a chance to, uh, be a part of the Tim Horton Smile Cookie uh, 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 drive against their campaign, and they trusted me enough to come in and, and decorate some of the smiles and some of the cookies, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, they did uh, an amazing job with the campaign. Uh, they were more successful than last year, but I'm not going to tell you what that amount is. I'm going to let Tim Hortons announce that uh, on their own time. But anyways, thanks for everybody that uh, bought cookies uh, during the campaign and support and uh, worthwhile uh, projects that will go towards the Swan Valley Health Facilities in our valley. So it was good. And with that, I don't think I have anything else to report. Uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Poole, who has his own report as well. I do have a uh, written 
report. I uh, can take any questions on. Just to get council aware, next Cal meeting on Tuesday will be a sort of an orientation review, with the highlight just being a review of the procedures bylaw. Uh, as well, this Friday, you'll see the property standards bylaw and the changes that are, that are going to be there, and a lot of report along with it so we can explain the changes and how that's going to be enforced. <coughs> uh, the Ag Society report, so we're going to put that up on, I know that was a request from Council a while ago, but uh, we've been able to find everything since the 50s. The, we've done our best on the handshake deals, but just so Council can see what is happening in the Ag Society so that we can really just create a new agreement, which really needs to happen, I think, so it's in writing and everything is on the table. Uh, the G8 meeting for G12. For June 12th, uh, we did receive the economic development report from the community group, so we'll send that out to all the members so that can be discussed uh, moving forward for June 12th. We just received that, so expect that in an email. And uh, the strat plan rating of our actions, again, expect the rating form to go out uh, in the next few days. And we're, we're going to be scheduling some meetings with Sapatoyak and West Pacific. Uh, just for our councils to get together and break bread. Uh, and I'll be scheduling a meeting with the Legacy Committee just to start the basis of our, our final agreement uh, for what that's going to look like. And in the office, I'm just going through employee assessments. Uh, we're having a staff meeting next week to go over uh, some info gathering from the employees and just some operational not issues, but stuff. Just so you know. <clears throat> and that's it. Any okay. questions? Uh, Councillor Powell. I'm um, just wondering, did we ever um, make mention of, our, of who we hired for our rec director and when he starts? Uh, I only did through council on email and the employees through email, but yes, we did. Uh, Brian Matanko did accept the, the position, so his first day will be May 29th. So we'll be welcoming him going through all of the orientations and tour of the town. And he will be at our first meeting for everyone to meet him. So, yeah, welcome him on the 29th. Definitely looking forward to meeting him. Mm -hmm. Council White. Because uh, I think most people are quite reasonable. Uh, it appears we still haven't come to a, uh, an agreement with uh, RM of Minbo relative to where we're going with fires. I'm wondering what are the plans to to get together again? Uh, we've, we've been trying almost weekly to, to, to see what we can get for a meeting. The latest response we get is it's not going to happen soon due to seating and farming. Okay. Appreciate you continue to try. Councilor Medwood and I count at the Premier Memorial. I have a, a couple. Under crime, your RCMP criminal forfeiture project, that's the camera surveillance grant? Yes. And where are we at with that? Have we started looking at how to downsize it? Uh, I'll be honest, I have not started. Well, I've just reviewed the grant. That's about it in terms of process and how it's going to be procured, whether the chamber is going to do it for us. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're but still at those early stages? Very early. Um, under your office work one, it says town capacity on bidding on local committee work. What is we're just reviewing, uh, like for, for an example, RISE sent out an RFP to do their accounting and financials. Uh, we will not be putting in a, a bid to do that work, but myself and Terry are just getting together just to review what we are doing, what we have capacity for, what we, what we potentially are getting out of. Okay. Um, AMM resolutions due May 31st, have we, drafted some from the different things we've kind of brought forward that would be great to have AMM proceed with? Yeah, I think even the obvious ones, I think we should send in, like the RCMP retro pay. The, the AMM takes all the resolu resolutions and makes one resolution of everything, but we, sh we should still send the obvious ones. So I'll draft an RCMP retro pay one, the body worn cameras. Uh, they're already there, we know they are, but we the, should send it in anyway. The snow removal agreements? Uh, 
I guess, yeah, that was another one, was the, the agreements for slow removal, yeah. And I know that uh, Deputy Mayor Morio has some pending, but if any councillors have any other ideas? Those are the only ones off the top of my head that I can think of, but I'm just wondering if, because I see your deadline here, so that's why I'm wondering if we've drafted something. Which, which means they should be into us by Friday, so we can review them at the Cal meeting next yes. week. Yes. I was just about to say that because the timelines are, are, are definitely narrowing on us here a little bit on that. And uh, I think that they will be vetted. Um, I think the first, I can't remember the date. They set the date when we're going to be actually doing that. I think it's the first week in June is when actually we're going to vet them. So we and need them in. Do councillors write them or we just kind of let you know this is what we'd like to see a resolution on yeah. and then you guys let me know i re i rewrite them for tuesday and then amm may even rewrite them after that so but our idea goes to that typically not um but they will be vetted yeah yeah <clears throat> deputy mayor morio um mr pool have you had any contact uh from shared health in regards to the uh, um additional costs regarding the medevacs coming into the uh the airport here or has that been silent uh nothing from shared health i was expecting an email and again we just inquire every week or two weeks but uh nothing since february from shared health we are okay, uh, we're providing the ems information that we have to some of the municipalities that are asking specifically what to ask their ems so we're giving them our information and they'll send it back to us. So we may have two other municipalities to join the fight. Okay, um, yeah, because I'm in Brandon here, so I can poke that bear tomorrow morning uh, okay. for you. So, and yeah, that EMS data all comes out of the same spot. So it might be instead of having three different municipalities asking, um, we could potentially just have one formal request and get all that information versus in one lump sum instead of three separate ones so okay. and you could probably even ask for uh the other airports that would go through it and they could provide that to us and you can do that through a tip or request if they uh don't want to but uh i can poke that bear again tomorrow also when i'm here yeah even if we have every airport or small airport even if the municipality doesn't want to join the fight we can still get their data yeah exactly that's perfect yeah, I can I can poke that bear tomorrow morning. Okay, thanks. With a nice sharp stick. Thank you, uh, Council Borchak. Um, just with respect to the resolution, would it be helpful if you kind of did a rough draft for anything, and then you could kind of tweak it? Like, would that expedite it and yes, alleviate definitely. some of that? Yes. Okay, that's what I was yeah. wondering. Yeah. If if that can be done, that's even better. And just so you know, in the last uh, uh, AMM booklet that we got out, what, what am I, magazine, I guess. Um, there actually is a two-pager on writing resolutions yeah, in there. Yeah, that's exactly it. We, we've seen in the past years uh, effective mm -hmm. resolutions, and we've seen ineffective resolutions that are too vague. Uh, we need to be, uh, the, the resolutions need to be better. They need to be, you know, right to the point and, uh, and decisive of what the action is that we want the AMM to, to take. So we need to be smart about that because there's lots of resolutions, I think, that have been good resolutions, mm -hmm. but they were not to the point and they and they failed uh, to get even moved or passed. I should say moved, but passed. Go ahead. Really, really good point. And don't forget whereas statements. Your whereas statements really hammer it home. Because of this, this is what we're doing. So use your whereas statements and be prepared to talk on it. If we're going to put resolutions yes. on, we should have a councillor, an elected official up there to speak on the issue. Yes. Yeah, it's even better yet. Okay, any further discussion on that? Councillor Bowman? I don't know if this would be, if it even refers to that resolution that we're speaking of, but, but I still have, a, I still have never got an answer on how the the police are paid for. I understand they're paid for by the federal government uh, through the province. Rural residents in the municipalities don't pay for police protection, but in a roundabout way they do. They pay through their federal income tax, which pays for the police 
with that, that's fine. We all pay income tax living in the town of Bonner, but we also pay municipal tax for our police protection. So I'm wondering, are we double paying? Yes, so the, the, there is a cost to providing RCMP in the outlying municipalities up to a certain population. So the, the province pays for that 100%. So the PST that we pay goes to that cost. So we are paying twice. Our PST goes to that cost, covering their costs of our, our RCMP, plus we have our own bill. So I guess my question is, how do they... <coughs> How do they think that's all right? It's a really good question. I can't wait to see you at the, uh, at the microphone uh, stating that oh, because I think it would be really, up. and you do it really well, so I think I'm going to chunk. Well, providing more information on that, uh, Councillor Bobic, um, Mr. Poole is right. Uh, the real municipalities that do not have a purchase agreement or a, a contract with the federal government to provide uh, policing are covered by the province. Um, depending on the size of your municipality, if you're between 5,000 and 7,500, I believe, uh, we pay 70%, the province pays 30%. And if you're over another threshold, then the municipality pays 90%. And the province pays 10 percent but then also the province also provides the policing grant to the municipalities uh, on a per capita basis of four dollars and change uh, to the municipalities that have uh, policing grants so with that we all know that that four dollars and change per capita does not come anywhere near the cost of the uh, amount of what our RCMP bill is. So, but uh, short answer to you is yes, we are paying twice. We are paying PST uh, that pays our 10% plus portions of all the municipalities also. And then through our municipal taxes, we're paying even extra along with uh, a lot of the services that potentially originate in other municipalities that end up in our municipality and carry on from there. So. Hence why there's uh, the Dark Department of Justice has uh, en had engaged uh, MNP to, to do a police costing uh, review that is sitting on the Minister of Justice's desk, but uh, we all know that report is basically not going to see the light of day until after the election. Okay. <clears throat> Good discussion. It did get off topic off the uh, sales report, but uh, anyway, still a good discussion. So. Moving on to 8, 8.1. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Services District financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2022 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Service District budget for 2023 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Uh, on the item three under expenditures, it says insurance $5,000, then underneath it says coverage, replacement $3,600. What exactly is that insurance for that the replacement is only $3,600? Uh, CFO Benita, can you, I, I can't quite remember this. Because I'm thinking it doesn't cover a building. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the premium for the building. The insurance company was able to negotiate a good, or the agent was able to negotiate a good rate. So the insurance policy itself is $5,000 and the line item for $3,600 for replacement that's our deductible then or how did, what's that $3,600 represent? If you add them all up those three items together equal $5,000 so thirty six dollars of that insurance goes for the replacement $800 it's broken up like that okay that, that's what I needed explained thank you for the discussion 
Councilor uh, Powell. Oh, yeah, All in favor? <laughs> Scary. <clears throat> 8.3, result of the Swan Valley, Swan Veterinary Services District 2023 municipal contribution in the amount of $7,204.50 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. The amount uh, mentioned that is accounted for in our 2023 budget I th we, a, are, we actually budgeted 8000 because we were expecting a, yeah, we knew it was a bigger go effect of the statistics update, okay. but sorry. I thought so. I just wanted to double check. Thank you. Further discussion? And it slightly went up, not by very much at all. So all in favor? It's carried. Okay, 8.4. Resolved that Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2022 be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.5. Resolved the, uh, that the 2023 Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission budget be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a question. It shows that under sales and cost of sales, the fuel budget is like $22,000 less than the previous actual years. Is this typical? To un Who's taking that? The, the fuel fluctuates due to the provincial forest fires. So we had a few years where the water bombers were based out of our airport, and we're not expecting that this year. So if it does happen, they will go huge again. But okay. we are not expecting that to, to happen again. Okay. And my other one is under other revenue for hangar rentals. We went from just over 8000 to 9900 to 8,500, and now we're budgeting for 9,600. That's a combination of removing two stalls and increasing the rates per stall. So it kind of okay. up and down. <clears throat> Those are the only numbers. Left. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.6. Result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2023 Municipal Levy in the amount of $31,231 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Did we account for this amount in our 2023 budget? We're on target for that line? Just checking the exact number. Is, 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 that, is that draft budget uh, not on our all that? Uh, the financial plan is not on that. No. I didn't have a chance to compare. I figured CFO Benita would have a quicker answer anyways. <laughs> we budgeted 48000 Okay. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 8.7. Result of Swan Lake Watershed District 2023-24 annual levy for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2024 in the amount of $13,698.22 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor White. I just want to concur with what uh, Councillor Bobbick said. There's been lots done on our riverbanks through the conservation district, absolutely. Uh, that water that comes from over there goes over, it goes through our community, is used by our community as well. I appreciate, perhaps we'd like more money spent here, but what they do up there helps us here. Okay, further discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have no objection. All I want to know is, did we budget accordingly for 2023? 
Yes, this, this amount actually has not changed for several years, so. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, go ahead. Uh, just a watershed, if there's going to change, be any change, they would, would have to notify you. So right. you'll, you'll know well in advance. Okay. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. 8.8, .8. result the town of Swan would donate the use of tables and chairs up to a value of $945 to the Swan River Golf and Country Club for the June 24, 2023 Golf Bonanza. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Go ahead. I have a question. In their letter, they do also reference, um, sorry, just give me one second. They do also reference possibility of a donation of a pool party or a donation of ice time rental. Um, seeing how we're still kind of haven't brought it to the table with our new in lieu of and how to handle grants consistently, would we consider a request of a pool party pass or ice time rental as an in lieu donation the same as we do tables and chairs? We've done something that in the past, but we would have to wait for our new manager to be in place before we could even, even consider that. So, no, fair but enough. It, but I it has happened before. So, yeah. With this brought the thought and idea that that might actually be a great way to be promoting our pool as well and maybe get a little more use uh, through the pool is to offer um, as sort of a raffle prize or whatever at these types of um, events. Okay, Councilor Powell. The only problem with that is that if we, if we grant it to them, then we're going to have to grant it to everybody who has, and that, that would be the only yeah. issue. So that would be that would be a, a huge, huge, huge cost, right? It potentially would be something to factor in when we discuss that, but at the same time, we seem to have the same situation with the tables and chairs used. So mm -hmm. deciding where to draw the line or put a max number of how many go out. <clears throat> My vote would be to sell the tables and chairs. But anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Oh, yeah. Just a, oh, just sorry, a comment. Here. It's a wonderful yeah. gift to, to the uh, to the community there. And let's say the gross a hundred thousand. We're going to get twenty thousand dollars out of that to the CT scan, which would be awesome. And up, up to recently, they've been hitting those numbers. But the second part of the letter, I think we should be aware of also where. The council has been invited to come and cook, come and move some tables, do something, and I think it'd be good for council to be involved in a community activity like that. So if you're available on the day, just talk to any of the boys. I've been coming back from White Horse the day before, so I'll be ready. Yeah. So long story short, if you'd it's like to volunteer, uh, please do so. We'll sign you up <laughs> for cleanup duties. <laughs> okay, further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 10, 10.1. Result of the, the accounts as follows, but hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30231 to number 30291, totaling $98,032.23 as listed on Schedule A. <coughs> Payroll accounts checks number 5315 to 5319, totaling $103,871.37 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $29,502 and 16 cents as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boitcha. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I have a few, thank you for the extra details. Um, with regards to line 30238, the Rocky Mountain Phoenix, uh, all I want to know is what is a quick response starter kit for that one? Um, that is a engineered plastic product. Um, we're in the process of replacing our 15 year old uh, wooden blocks and stuff like that that we use for vehicle extrication for vehicle stabilization with an engineered plastic product that uh, has weight stamps on it and stuff like that and they're supposed to last a lifetime so that was the first first step in the replacement of all of our kits. Ooh, excellent, thank you. Um, I can continue? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Oh yeah, traffic signs I can take off because you provided me with the extra info. <laughs> um, the Hayes lift station maintenance. What did we do for maintenance there? I'm guessing that's the natural gas maintenance. They have to be checked annually. I'm, that's only a guess, but I got I, which check number? Uh, I think it. Sorry, my screen's flashing here. Uh, that one is the three zero two six three. Cummins, yes, that's the natural gas engine. This uh, standalone generator. So okay. they have to be serviced uh, once a year. Okay. And three zero two six eight, the Life Saving Society. Those, I get they're the books probably for the um, first aid training and stuff like that. Do we recoup the costs on those? through, because I'm assuming that's what they are, is the training books for first aid, lifeguard, all that stuff. Do we recoup the cost of those through the... I, I don't know the answer. I will have to get back to you on that. We did uh, recover uh, over $600 from the school division for whatever uh, their institutes used for the training materials. <coughs> And line 30273, the all net meetings, I, I saw the detailed invoice. I'm just curious what exactly this gets us for, like what do we get for the six months for that 2000? Uh, the, the ability to run this meeting on all net, what you're looking at on your screen. Okay, so the agenda items and all that. The whole program. The, okay. Along with the website maintenance. That's right. Uh, no, actually, the website is a separate invoice. This is just for the resolutions and minutes and agendas and, and that, just the meetings Easy. part. And that, that covers the cost of having those, like our files and documents and stuff there? I, I can't remember which one that's tacked on. I, but I believe that is the meetings. We get the documents and everything with that, yes. Okay. I was just wondering what that got us. It all costs money. And the three items on the list from April 5th for Amazon Marketplace, those were items that could not be found here locally. There's nobody here to actually answer that, so. Uh, yeah, have to... those were flags that I ordered. Uh, used to get them out of Winnipeg, but they're cheaper on Amazon. Okay, fair enough. And the uh, April 17th Flamin sales for the security fence rental for bylaw enforcement, is that still what's around Conrad Apartments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, have, have we not looked into... They won't sell us that fence, but we charge it to the property. Because it's not... Taxpayers are out. <clears throat> yeah. But, Yet, I was just going to say, isn't that exactly the direction it's potentially going? Possibly, but we have to trust that the owner will pay for it. Okay, fair enough. Um, the last one is the Manitoba Numbered Company. What exactly is the code reader? The Snap-on Tools code reader. What does that do for us? Gives us the ability to, to troubleshoot what's wrong with an engine. Oh, okay, yes, I remember that. Thank you. Yeah, that was a reissue of the check. Uh, just, there was an issue with the address. So that one uh, was already sent in, uh, but this was just a reissue of it. I thought that's what it might be, but I wanted to make sure. That's mm -hmm. all I have this week. Okay. Ooh. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2, result of the financial statements for the four months ending April 30th, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1, result of the bylaw four, 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate of taxes for 2023 be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Medwood. 
Discussion? Go ahead. Uh, so we're setting a rate on this bylaw, so what is the rate? So are we saying, are we saying in the bylaw that it's 4.5% increase, or what are we saying? It's 4.5% mill rate increase. Mill rate, mill rate yes. Increase. Yeah, mill rate increase, sorry. Yeah, okay. Further discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Um, I would propose one change instead of borrowing the 150000 um, for the centennial uh, utility repair that instead of increasing our borrowing that we cover that entirely out of the reserve. Yeah, I'll talk to uh, CFO Ganita about that and just uh, make sure that we can do that and then we can make that change. So okay. but, <laughs> you can't, then we would have to table this then? No, we can, we would have to just go through a process of using reserve to pay for the project. But we, but we couldn't have third reading on it tonight then. We can still pass third reading tonight. Uh, yeah, because it's a reserve. Right, we cannot borrow any. Oh, more. good point, good point. Okay. <clears throat> That's correct, CFO Ganita. Uh, yeah, uh, the municipal act allows us to take money from a specific purpose reserve at any time, no public hearing required as long as the money is used for the purpose for which the reserve was created. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you noted that then? That's been noted? I have that. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, anything further, Deputy Mayor Morio? No, that's the only suggestion I had at this point. Okay, so back to Councillor Bobbin. So in the budget, but I remember, I don't have it in front of me, so is there $250,000 allocated for Athlon Street for improved water drainage from the ditch road for 275. Yeah, that one's contingent on uh, our neighbors and Manitoba government uh, all getting on board with that project. And if not, then it won't go this year. But that money's still allocated for to come into this year's budget. So is there, I guess my, why is it in there? Why don't we wait on them? Why do we put it in the budget? Why don't we wait till they say they're gonna do it? Why are we sticking the repairs money in a sock waiting on highways to make a decision? That's the decisions that council made prior to this reading. And I also 100% of that is out of the reserve, so it's, it's not being taxed. So if it doesn't happen, then you're not, it's not being taxed? That's okay. Nope, that answers my question. Um, and uh, Councilor Medwood. Um, my comment was just going to be that if there's changes that need to be written into this bylaw with regards to using the reserves instead of borrowing for Centennial, I'm not going to be comfortable passing a second or third reading until those come back to us with the actual changes so it's in writing. Yeah, you can vote how you wish. Yeah, like it can be changed, but if that's what your position is, that's fine too. Uh, Councillor Boycha. Uh, just in the capital projects, it looks like 140000 was for grant from grants. And then 140 from reserves for that 280 affluent drainage. So maybe we had to put it in the budget in order for that grant to be applied for. Is that that uh, grant was uh, from our partner, from our municipal partners? Because that's oh, okay. a project that benefits them. Uh, so I put it in there in case it went ahead. Uh, sorry, just on Zoom, it takes me a bit to flip back and forth. So that's why I'm slow to respond. Um, but yeah, with, with it being reserves and with it being contribution, if they want that project to go ahead, and if it doesn't go ahead, it doesn't affect, like we're not taxing extra this year because of it. Okay. We Very just good. get that money, it'll stay in the reserve if we don't go ahead with it, and then right. we'll be able to use it on something else for next year. For the discussion, Councilor Bobbitt. So just to go back to the first reading this, I voted against this, and probably my, one of my main reasons was that I couldn't really explain to ratepayers how we got to this point, but thanks to uh, CFO Ganita, he explained some of the things that, as 
why we're here with it and give it to me in probably layman terms that I can understand and explain to a rate payer. So I thank you for that. So I will be voting in favor of this budget at this time. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.2, result of the bylaw 4, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate of taxes for 2023, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? This, this is a recorded This vote. is a recorded vote. All in favor? I'm still of the opinion that I need the writing changed before I... Yeah, that's that's fine, but... The, <clears throat> okay, and opposed? It's carried. Resolved in pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council Golden to Committee, and close the meeting to the public. We have library to discuss. Um, moved by... Councillor Wojciech, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. We can take a little break uh, right now. Because I was just thinking before, before we go too far on that, and it just occurred to me um, that maybe our municipal rep, um, if people are going to be basing a decision, if that resolution does come forward on that person's performance, maybe we should have a report from the uh, our municipal rep on what that performance has been like. Say that again. If if a potential resolution is coming forward um, to reappoint or not reappoint said individual, um, maybe uh, our municipal rep should give us a report on because it's hard to base a decision on. Oh, not knowing. I, I hear what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Sounds yeah, and that and that's that that should be that's an HR matter, which more potentially should be in camera and not part of the debate of the resolution. That's true. Yeah, there shouldn't be much debate on the resolution. No, it should be. A... So should we go with the camera then? Unless, if, if the direction is for the municipal rep to bring back a report, yeah. we can just not do any items arising out of camera. Okay, so then the person that's on the board right now would leave the person there? They technically, their term is up, so they're not. Okay. Yeah, but it's been up since April, so. Yeah, so it's, it's not true. changing anything. Okay, so then I guess then we wait if you want to give us a report. Okay. And then we can look at our next meeting if we're looking at appointments or reappointments, whatever it might be, extensions or whatever. If council's happy with that, then I'm happy with that too. Yeah. Okay. Good, uh, good point there, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Result of this regular meeting, council will be now adjourned at 9.51 p.m. Moved by Councillor Wojciech, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Oh, members privilege.